I'm pretty sure Darth, these aren't the rebels you're looking for. So. And in this video we are talking about the Rebs for Dead Zone 3rd Edition. The Rebs are anti-GCE PS to a absolute fault. They do not like them whatsoever. They are against the corporate greed that the GCE PS are about, um, which would mean they're against the enforcers to the same degree. And sort of against the Forge Fathers in a way because the Forge Fathers sell them certain equipment and whatnot and um, a little bit against the Marauders because the GCPS use them a fair bit depending on the missions and objectives and whatnot. The Rebs on the human side could contain um, ex-military, ex-corporation -corp people um, disenfranchised f political or um, religious free thinkers, anything around that sort of thing. There are also a lot of alien races of various kinds, such as the Sphere, which their planet was accidentally um, dro burnt up, and I don't mean set on fire, and exp well, I don't think set on fire, um, basically all the oceans dried up and, and and similar things like that because the GCPS was weapons testing on it. Um, the problem with that is the sphere are essentially fish people. So when their oceans dry up, it's a bit of a problem. A, another one is the Terratons, which because they live so long, they thought that the GCPS were just looking around and yeah, it's not much of a problem. But the younger ones, because they see the GCPS for what they're doing to the Terratons, basically owning the Terratons by putting them into uh, contracts and um, copyright laws and all sorts of other such legal doodads. Basically own the Terraton Empire in everything but name. Um, older Terratons just, meh, nah, pume humans will die but the younger Terratons think no we're going to take care of this problem and that's it there are tons of alien races and this is a faction you could go to town on making them look how you want so if you're reading along in the force book you will need to pay on page 102 these are leaders, starting with Sheo Silverback. Speed of 2-3, no ring stat, fighter 4, survive 5, armor 1, 5 hit points, side 3, 40 mil base. Agile, recon 5+, plus, tactician 1. The splat is pounce attack. The active model may leave an enemy occupied cube without the enemy getting a free assault. In addition, if the active model is Sheo or an Alpha Simeon, should really say Alpha Simeon Brawler, because there's only one Alpha Simeon model type in the force it may ignore the enemy models in in cubes it would advance or sprint through as it leaps over their heads so the first part of that splat in bad um, it means if you've got a model that's better for shooting purposes that's pretty good um, it's better if you're using a lot of um, simian brawlers but um it's not it's not bad for a bit of evasion quality stuff it's not bad at all uh he's got knuckle dusters which close combat knockback smash one four victory points 34 points he's pretty good at close combat capabilities he is pretty fast he's got a ton of health for only a sr3 model he really has uh, it's not going to 
die that quickly I don't think um, that pounce attack's really really good for defensive capabilities and slightly offensive if you're using simian brawlers I suppose it's good for using it on himself really be good in that way um, would it be the leader I'd go for? Maybe you're getting uh, four dice in close combat because of smash. Potentially you're getting five because size three, you are bigger than most things. Next we have the Rebel Cell Leader. Speed two, one, two. Speed one, two, sorry. Um, range four, fight five, survive five, armor one, two hit points, size one, 25 mil base. Recon four plus, tactician two. The splat is Jack of all trades. Spend a special order result, which is a splat, to allow the active model to use their choice of range, fight, or survive stat value to be the target number for a test. A stat cannot be swapped in this way if a model would normally not be able to make the test. For example, a model with a dash value for its range stat cannot shoot and so cannot choose to test using its fight or survive values instead for a shoot action right this is a bit of a long winded way of saying things so I'll try and simplify it because it's a bit weird how it's worded um, essentially what it means is that you can swap one stat for another stat for a test for example if if a model you're using this splat on has got a survive of three but a shoot of six and you really want to use it shooting you could swap the survive and the shoot around just for that action or that test um similarly similarly can't say the word um if a model's got a fight of four but a survive of seven there's not many but you see what i'm saying you could swap those around so it survives on fours if you really want it to survive that's basically what's saying also if a model's got a dash in the stat like it says it's got no stat it's got a dash in the range stat then you can't swap the dash for another stat if it's got a number in it so if a model's got a fight of six and a shoot of dash you can't swap it around so it can at least shoot on sixes can't do that because it can't shoot anyway um, there's three different leader loadouts you've got the human variant which has got rifle range six rapid fire combat team training two victory points and 28 points you've got the sphere variant which has got a meta magma lance range five ap2 three victory points and 30 points then you've got the Rin variant, twin pistols, range 3, weight far 1, and twin knives, which are close combat, frenzy 1, 3 victory points, and 30 points. It's a pretty good support commander, the jack of all trades being fairly decent, there's a ton of times where that's going to be really useful. Recon on 4+, plus, again, is always good, and it's got pretty good shooting, and how do you want it? Do you want a cheap, cheap-ish leader? For these then go for the human variant you've got combat team training so if more than 50 percent of your force dies then you still can re-roll your, com your command dice so there's that do you want a leader with anti-armor capabilities then you want the sphere variant do you want something that has got a bit of re-rolling for shooting in close combat then you want the rune variant the rune variant's all right um, I'd say it's a bit expensive. I'd have thought it'd be 28 or 26 points. I think the Rin's slightly expensive because all you're getting is short ring shooting and two re-rolls. That's basically it. Uh, that being said though, the support option, the support abilities for the Cell Leader is pretty good regardless of which one you go for. Finally, we have the Yindage Infiltrator Commander. Speed 1-2. Range of 5, fight of 4, survive 5, no armor, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. Agile, frenzy 1, recon 5 plus, scout and tactician 1. Uh, the splat is hide in shadows. At the end of the active model's activation, and for the rest of the round, the model cannot be targeted by shoot actions and cannot have line of sight drawn to it. The model is still affected 
by keywords that target every model in the cube such as frag, indirect, it burnt or blast and can still be the target of assault actions. This is a pretty good splat, it means unless it's something that indirectly affects the model or they can get in close combat, you ain't ever going to be affected by things for shooting options anyway. <laughs> so that means things like suppression weapons unless it's targeting someone else in the cube. Um, heavy weapons with a lot of AR, AP. Um, weapons that can knock things back and um, stuff like that it's really good for that sort of thing if you're on an, on an objective and your opponent really wants to take you out then unless you've got a weapon that indirectly affects that model it ain't gonna be that effective um, st um what's it got? Oh, it's got a rifle um two victory points and 20 points the splat is good the fight is good it's the cheapest leader um it's got scout recons on five which that's not bad not bad at all um it's got agile so that's not bad either i guess frenzy one for a bit of close combat ability it's there i guess um it's just a cheap leader essentially um i've not seen anyone use these which is a shame actually but <sighs> The cell lead is better and silverback is way way better. Next we have the troops and specialists starting on page 103. First one is the Rebel Sorak. Speed 1-2, range of 5, 5-5, five five, survive 6, no armour, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. Uh, there's two variants, there is the basic Sorak which has a blaster. Range 4, Explosive Blast, 1 victory point and 6 points. Uh, you've then got the Sword Spawn variant which has got dual blades, close combat, Frenzy 2, 1 victory point and 8 points. They're both troops. Um, the Blaster variant is cheap and it can knock people about but it doesn't really do any damage which is a shame. But there is strategy to that. I've never seen them being used that much, but I'm pretty sure people who can play Dead Zone pretty well can make them work. I can't, but then again, I don't win games very often. I just know how to play them. Which, yeah, shut up. <laughs> the Sword Spawn variant isn't bad. It's eight points and you've got some frenzy, so that's all right. Your main problem with the Sword Spawn is that to get a fair few of them, you're either going to have to get the, um, I think it's the Reb starter set, which is alright, but doesn't contain any mains, it doesn't really contain many of them. Or you're going to have to go through Star Saga and get the um, Devil's Betrayal expansion, which a lot of models for this come from that, and at the time of this video, it's hard to get those models from the Star Saga expansion, so <sighs> that that's going to be a problem. It's good that it's a troop, because if it were a specialist, I, I really couldn't see the point of it. Um, they're not bad, they're under 10 points, so give them a try. Next is the Rebel Trooper, speed 1-2, range of 5, 5-6, five six, survive 6. No armour, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. It's a troop, comes with a rifle, 1 victory point, 7 points. It's it's cheap shooting basically, that's, that's all it is. Pitiful close combat, pitiful survival capabilities. But shooting on 5 is not bad, at least you've got a rifle to your name. And I suppose if you're taking the Reb Cell Leader, you can you know, swap that range stat for that survive stat if you want them to survive a bit longer for seven points you're basically getting a gun that can move around and shoot so it is what it is it's cheap and cheerful next we have the rebel yindage speed one two range of five fight of five survive of six no armor two hit points size one 25 mil base agile friendship one and scout 
It's a troop with a rifle, uh, one victory point, ten points. Um, uh, put in the comments below if you've used these. I've never seen anyone use these either on the um, various groups in um, pictures where they post up this is the force I'm going to be using tonight or this is the force that I was using a couple of weeks ago or whatever or on the Mantic blog I've, I've never really seen people use the Indige which is a shame because they do have a lot going for them uh, shooting on five and fighting on fives mean they're slightly better in that regard than the uh, trooper they've also got scout agile and frenzy so you got a bit of mobility there uh, other than that they're just like the trooper which is why they only three points more um they're not bad i don't think um but i haven't seen them use that much which is a shame next we have the sphere hunter um the indie is a troop by the way um yeah sphere hunter Speed 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 5, survive 5. Ar no armour, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. It's a troop, and it's got 2 weapons, the harpoon gun, which is range 5, AP 1, and the blade, which is uh, close combat, frenzy 1. 1 victory point, 12 points. It's 5 points more than trooper, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. Because being 5 points more than trooper means it's only 2 points off from being a, another trooper. That being said though, these stats are a lot better. You've got AP on your gun, even though it's slightly shorter range. Your survive is a ton better. I mean, it's only one better, but surviving 50% of the time rather than three, three out of eight times. Hmm. Um, but it's the 12 points. It is worth that, but considering what other troops, the rebs have it's facing a lot of competition if you want some fairly cheap ap then it's not bad next we have the sphere hunter mako and i'm not going to go through all the stats it's basically the same as sphere hunter except the base needs to be 40 mil it's got the black keyword its speed is 25 and it's 13 points rather than 12 so being a hell of a lot faster you are only one point more. The downside is that unless there's a ramp, you can't climb up buildings because bikes have every uh, benefit and penalty as vehicles do, apart from bikes can be pinned. So I think it's more of a downside than a upside. That being said, though, that that speed can mean you can get to objectives more or less when you like. It's got no armour, so just be careful there. Next we have the Z Scavenger. Speed 1, 2, range of 6, fight of 7, survive 6, no armour, 1 hit point, size 1, 25mm base. Hacker and Stealthy. It's a troop, comes with a pistol, which is range 3, no victory points, 6 points. I'd take a pop at some of these. I'd try probably about 3. Reason being is... They are cheap, they don't give any victory points when they die, and the models are literally so small you can hide them behind anything and your opponent ain't going to notice them. They've also got stealthy, which means they aren't going to be getting extra die shot in the open, and they've got hacker, which isn't bad. They've only got one hit point and their survive is terrible, so you got to watch out there. But if you're just wanting unlocks to have your specialists and your... Uh, supports then this ain't bad um the sphere hunter mako and the z scavenger are both troops i apologize um z scavenger's not really that great but it's it's just there for the cheap unlocks but they don't don't count them out i've seen plague zombies do well so i'd love to see a lot of um, z scavengers being used if i'm honest <laughs> Um, yeah, this is the thing. The Sphere Hunter is 12 points, which is double the points costs of a Z Scavenger. So, it's swings and roundabouts, really. Um, you could get these from the um, Rebs box, or you could get a load from the Dreadball team. This is the thing with the Rebs force. A lot of them, you, 
if you want a force that's centered around certain um races you could just get the dreadball team and buy some weapons and there you go it's only going to be a little bit tricky when you need to go for leaders and specialist variants which for the z you've got i think about 10 or 12 in a box something like that so you can have a fair few why not <laughs> next we have the grogan Speed 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 5, survive 4, no armour, 2 hit points, side 1, 25mm base. It's got a resilient 1. Uh, the bow specialists, you've got two variants. You've got the Onslaught Cannon, which is range 5, suppression weight far 1, 1 victory point, 16 points. You've also got the Desolator variant, which is range 8, AP 3, 1 victory point, 14 points. That is cheap for a range 8 AP 3 guy. That is someone you could use to take out a Strider. Now, I wouldn't say it would be easy by any stretch of the imagination, but it's possible. Uh, being that you range 8, it's only going to be things like the Striders, Snipers, and other specialised heavy weapons or mid weapons that can touch you. Uh, you survive and forge, and you've got resilient ones, so you've got a bit of durability to you and you are cheap I mean even if take the onslaught cannon yes it's short range for a suppression weapon but you've got cheap suppression that's not bad that's not bad at all next we have the crow warrior speed of one two range of six fight of four survive six no armor two hit points size one 25 mil base aerial deployment frenzy one and jump pack it's got its specialist, it's got a wrist blaster which is range 3, explosive blast, 1 victory point, 10 points. It's cheap, it's a fights on 4s, that's great I guess. Um, it's got aerial deployment and jump pack, again great. <sighs> the models don't look too bad, I like the models. The problem is they're a bit hard to get hold of. And... <sighs> Look, if you want a blaster, you might as well go for a Rebel Sorak. I mean, that's that's four points less, and you've got a longer range blaster. I mean, uh, fires on force. Yeah, that's that's great and all, but uh, I don't see the point of the Crawl Warrior. I I honestly don't. Put in the comments below if you can find these useful. I honestly can't myself um, just because what these do there are stuff in the Rebs list that do it better if I'm honest next we have the Alpha Simeon Brawler speed 2-3 no range stat 5-4 survive 5 armor 1 5 hit points side 3 40 mil base agile and rampage it's a specialist with spike gauntlets, which is close combat, not back smash one, three victory points, 26 points. It is really good and really cheap for what it does, which kind of counteracts with the rampage, which gives it a bit of a risk factor because if you take a wound, then rampage activates, and then every time after it activates, you roll a dice and on a one or a two your opponent activates the model instead of you but on a roll of eight you get an extra one for your speed so you are moving three four which is great um yeah it's that little bit of a risk that could really screw you over that being said though you've got armor you've survived on fives which isn't bad uh you're fighting on fours and you're getting four dice in close combat yes you've got knockback but that could potentially be used to your advantage, depending on how you knock them about. Um, for 26 points, 5 hit points for a size 3 model, that's pretty decent. Next we have the Rebel Terraton. Speed of 1-2, range of 6, fight of 4, survive 5, armor 1, 4 hit points, size 3, 40mm base. Teleport and tough. It's a specialist with three weapons. It's got the ceremonial blades, which are close combat AP1. It's got a grenade launcher, which is range three, explosive frag three, one use only. And hand flamer, which is range two, it burns one use only. Three victory points, 30 points. 
the Rebel Terraton and the Simeon Brawler are both pretty good. There are upsides and downsides for taking one over the other. The Brawler is faster, has got more health, has got more dice in close combat. It's, it's got Agile as well, however it's got Rampage. The Rebel Terraton has got AP in close combat, has got some shooting capabilities, it can teleport and it's got tough, it, but it is slightly more expensive and the ranged weapons are one use only each and with a range of six. Uh, at least the weapons that have a secondary effect, so the explosive and the it burns so you could potentially kill people with burning them or by knocking them into someone else so this swings and roundabouts there um, I don't know which one's better um, like I said they've both got pros and cons um, um, decide, decide yourself which one's better but they both have their good uses I think they both have their good uses next we have the Judd 1 Medic speed 1 2 no range or fight stat survive 5 no armor 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base, NG shield 3, hacker and medic, is a specialist, 1 victory point and 10 points. This is just a cheap medic. He has also got 3 energy shields, so there's some durability there. Um, I've not seen many of these used, however, which is a shame. I suppose you don't necessarily have to use Judd ones to get these, you could use any model if you want. Um, and don't give them any sort of weapon. And maybe give them a case or a big backpack, uh, something like that. Paint them so they look like medics, perhaps. I'd I'd say you've got options. Um, I'd give these a go. I I think there's a I think there's a good use out of them. It's a shame they've not been used much, but maybe I'm wrong on that. I I think there could be some really good potential for the Jud One medics. Next we have the survey drone. Speed of 2-3, no range or fight or armor stat again. Survive 4, 1, R, one hit point, size 1, 25mm base. Agile, construct and shield 2, evade and hacker. It's a specialist, no victory points, 7 points. It's basically there to take objectives and run across the other side of the board to your opponent's side and run off or take objectives there. It's got 2 energy shields and survived on 4s. So that's pretty decent. It's also got construct, so it can't be pinned. It's also gives no victory points when it dies. So yes, it's got one hit point, but it's survived on fours with two energy shields. So I reckon you're going to be at it a fair bit. Also, if you shoot it a, f a fair bit, then you have wasted a turn shooting it a piddly little drone. You moron. Um. That being said, though, it takes up a specialist slot, so you've got to be careful there. Um, other than that, I can see these being used a little bit more than they used to be, though they do have problems of, like I said, taking up a specialist slot. Next we have the Terraton Shock Trooper. Speed 1-2, range of 5, fight of 5, survive 4, arm 1, 3 hit points, size 2, 25mm base. Teleport. Uh, it's a specialist. It's got an arc launcher, which is range 4, AP 1, and a mace, which is close combat, smash 1. Uh, two victory points, 22 points. It's basically a cheaper version of the Terraton with a way, way better shooting capability. It's also surviving on fours, but it hasn't got tough or as many hit points. It can still teleport, which. There are some uses for that. I've seen teleport used. A lot against me and it's really annoying <laughs> um, it's not got as many hit points as the normal Terraton that's because it's not as big um, like a lot of these forces you could just get the Terraton box set from Dreadball and just use a lot of Terratons if you want but they are specialists so just be careful they are not cheap by rep standards so just be careful there they're not bad uh, shooting's a bit short range, but shooting on 5 with AP1, that's not bad, right? 
Next we have the Rin Nomad. There's two variants. Hmm. Speed of 1, 2, range of 4, fight 5, survive 5, arm 1, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. Uh, the normal Nomad is a troop with twin pistols and twin knives. Uh, 1 victory point, 15 points. And the specialist comes with a sniper rifle, which is range 8, sniper scope, and also twin knives. Uh, 2 victory points, 22 points. It's a pretty good sniper, shooting on fours with armour, and you've got a bit of close combat capability. Not much, but it's there. Um, the troop variants... Um, it's not cheap, and what are you getting for it? Uh, short range shooting and a couple of rerolls. It's. I think it should have been the same points cost as the Sphere Hunter myself, but that's just me. The sniper for twenty two points. Uh, bring it down to twenty. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's just me, I guess. Next we have the Sphere Lancer. Speed one two. Range of four. Fight of six. Survive five. No armor. Two hit points. Size one. Twenty five mil base. It's a specialist with a meta magma lance, 2 victory points, 16 points. This isn't bad for a R anti armor thing. However, it's uh, 4 points more. I oh know, only 2 points more than the Grogan Desolator. The Grogan Desolator doesn't have as good a range stat, I grant you. But the weapon has better AP and better range. It's also worth one less victory point. Um, so unless you really want the um, Sphere Lancer, I would go for the Grogan Desolator over, over it every single time. Next we have the Rebel Weapon Team. Speed of 1-2, range of 5, fight of 6, survive of 6, no armour, 4 hit points, size 3, 60 mil. Base. It's a specialist with a missile launcher, which is range 10, AP 4, heavy, 2 victory points, 17 points. Again, it's a similar sort of thing to the um, Sphere Lancer, where it's good, but the Grogan Desolator pretty much does it better. It's in a similar sort of position. However, it's got better hit points, it's got better range, and it's got better AP. It has got heavy keywords, so you can't move and shoot with it, which is a bit of a problem. It also has a terrible survive stat, so you've got to watch out for that. I can see it having uses, but I've not seen many people use them, unfortunately. Next we have the Rebel Sniper. There's no, actually mo no actual model for the uh, Rebel Sniper or the next one. Uh, the Weapon Team uh, Specialist, by the way. Uh, Rebel Sniper, then. Speed of 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 6, survive of 6. No armor, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. It's a specialist, shock horror. It's got a sniper rifle, 2 victory points, 15 points. Now, it's shooting capabilities and it's close combat capabilities and it's survive capabilities for that aren't as... Oh, it's got stealthy. Um, yeah, apart from stealthy... Its stats aren't as good as the Rin Nomad Sniper, but it is 7 points less. So you could take a um, Rebel Trooper or a um, Z as your troop and then take the Rebel Sniper as a specialist if you want. Um, it's a cheap sniper and I think it does the job pretty well. Also, being it's got stealthy, you are not getting any pet. You are not getting shot with five dice. Um, I prefer the Rebel Sniper over the Rin Snipers because of their cheapness. But I can see the point of taking the Rin Snipers over these because they're a fair bit more durable and the stats are a fair bit better. Next and finally. Should I say is the Rebel Engineer. Speed of 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 5, survive 5, no armor, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. He's got engineer and hacker. You've got two weapons, it's a specialist. You've got the welding torch, which is range 2 AP1, and the power claw, which is close combat, AP2, frenzy 1, and companion. One rich point, 14 points. Um mm, 
I can sort of see the point of these. They are cheap and cheerful close combat specialists with a bit of shooting capability if you really want. Uh, engineers be meh at the minute for the Rebs because it doesn't really do much. And Hacker has its uses. Um, unless you're going to charge in, in the same turn, the Welding Torch seems a bit meh. Apparently you can get Reb Engineers if you look in the Dreadball section on the Mantic website. Um, I've not looked so you're going to have to put in the comments below if that's true. Um, I'd like to see these being used. The AP2 Friends of One in Companion which means you always have a friend in the same cube as you so you fight on four dice. I don't think it's too bad. I can see a point in them. And for 14 points with one victory point that's cheap. Next we have the support on page 109. Starting with the Rebel Strider. Speed of 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 5, survive of 5. Armor 3, 5 hit points, size 4, 60mm base. It's a walker. There are three variants. You've got the heavy support variant, which has got heavy burst laser, range 10, weight of 5, 2, suppression, 4 victory points, 38 points. You've then got the Urban Assault variant, which has got Chainsaw, Close Combat, AP2, Frenzy 1. And the Assault Flamer, which is range 3, AP1, it burns. For 4 points, 42 points. And then you've got the Tank Buster variant, which has got Polaris Cannon, range 10, AP4, 40 points, and 4 victory points. You've then got the op weapon options. Um, each strider can only have one of these. You've got the smoke launchers, which is range 3, grenade, smoke, one use only. And shoulder rockets, which is range 3, frag, 3, one use only. Um, the smoke launchers are an extra 3 points, and the shoulder rockets are an extra 6 points. Um, strides are pretty good, aren't they? Um, all of these are good for the Rebs. If you want anti-armor capability... Tank Buster, if you want good suppression capability, um, the, heavy, the heavy support one. That being said though, that's probably the weakest because you've got the um, Grogan with the, what's it called, the Onslaught Cannon, which is half the range, I grant you, but it pretty much does the same thing for um, over half the points. <laughs> The Urban Assault Strider is pretty decent with an AP2 close combat weapon and an AP1 burning weapon. Um, the most expensive, yes, but considering what it can do, it's pretty good. Um, it's more most expensive of the close combat options that the Rebs can have, but if you want something with good armour, good hit points and good weapons, they isn't bad. And the Polaris Cannon, it's range 10 with AP4. It's good for anti-armor capabilities. I'd probably say that the Urban Assault is probably the way to go, if it was me. But I can see the point of taking the Polaris Cannon and, I suppose, taking the heavy support variant with the heavy burst laser. It's just, considering what else the Rebs get, mm, the heavy burst laser seems a bit meh to me. Uh, next we have the Tigrex or Tigrex Outrider. Speed 2, 3, range of 5, fight of 4, survive 5, armor 1, 4 hit points, size 3, 60mm base. It's got Agile Beast, Stealthy and Tenacious. Uh, it's got a rifle and teeth and claws which are close combat, AP 1, Frenzy 1, 3 victory points, 24 points. It's cheap close combat, ain't it? It's fast, it's basically like the Simeon Brawler. Except with slightly less hit points. Um, it's got a gun. Um, I suppose it's an in-between the Simeon Brawler and the Terraton. Where is it's faster than the Terraton. And shoots better than the Terraton. But not as much health as the Simeon Brawler. But has got close combat AP. So there's that for it. Um... I can see the point of the Outriders, the only big downside for me is that because it's a support option you need three troops to take one. 
However, considering how cheap some of the troops are, that's not hard to do. You could, um, how many in 150 point force you could fit in these? Uh, cheapest troops, so 54 points for having nine Zs. And then the cheapest leader, what's the cheapest leader? Talk amongst yourselves. Um, cheapest leader is 20 points, so that's 74. Um, 98 for one. A hundred and twenty-two for two, a hundred and forty-eight. You could have three of these. <laughs> Why not? Um, I won't have three of these because other close combat capability, other close combat models, I should say, might be a better way to go. Next, we have the Living Legends, starting on page one hundred and ten. First one is Sergeant Eric Umisar. I think I've pronounced that right. Mantic are known for having really, really weird names for things. Speed 1, 2, range of 4, fight 5, survive 4, armor 1, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base, resilient 1. Uh, it comes with an onslaught cannon and a rocket salvo. The rocket salvo is range 8, indirect, frag 3, 1 use only. 2 victory points, 27 points it's basically a grogan with an onslaught cannon with some extras with a better shoot value a uh, grogan with an onslaught cannon is 16 points it's 11 points more so what you're getting you're getting armor you're getting a better shoot value and you're getting the rocket salvo which is good but it's one use only um bring it down to 25 points and then maybe we'll talk but apart from that I can see where they're coming from um, making it 27 points but I think it's slightly too expensive for what what he does I feel next we have Hund Rebel Bounty Hunter speed of 1 2 range of 4 5 to 5 survive 4 arm 1 2 hit points size 1 25 mil base fire control tactician 1 uh, he's got a sniper rifle and twin pistols for 3 victory points and 30 points. So you can shoot the sniper rifle and the twin pistols. And because of our sniper scope works, um, the sniper scope only takes effect if you decide to shoot for a long action. You can still shoot, but you don't get the extra dice. So you've got... Um, you can do two shoots as one action, which is nice. Shooting on fours, surviving on fours. Um, it's not cheap and it's worth a fair few victory points. But he has got tactician one as well, so if your leader dies, at least you're getting to keep the extra command dice still. So there's that. Next we have Ediac Premier. I think that's how you pronounce it. Speed of 1, 2, range of 4, 5 to 5, survive 5, no armour, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. Agile, Frenzy 1, Scout, Stealthy, Tactician 1 and Tough. Uh, comes with a crossbow which is range 6, AP 1, 3 victory points, 25 points. He's an odd one. He's a very odd one. I'm, I can see a point of using him. He's got Tough, which is really helpful, and Stealthy so you're not getting open shot on him. Um, he's got frenzy one, even though his fights a bit naff, considering he's a yindage. So, okay, fine, whatever. Shoots pretty decent though, so there's that. Uh, you've got scout and agile, so you've got a bit of mobility there. Um, he's not bad. He's he's not bad. Is the best I can do. He's got tough, which is a really really good thing for him to have. Next we have adrenaline. Noveleski, I've not pronounced that right, I don't know that much. Uh, speed 1, 2, range of 4, fight 5, survive 4, armor 1, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base, tactician 1. Uh, comes with a magma lance which is range 5, AP 2, comes with a hollow sight, and dull needle pistols which are range 2, toxic 1. 3 victory points, 26 points. So you've got a choice of either a short range shooting with the potential of causing extra wounds or the magma lance which has got hollow sight so you get an extra dice and ap2 which has got good army anti-army capabilities 
for 26 points is not bad uh, surviving fours with armor one got some survivability i guess uh, tactician one always welcome and shooting on fours again always welcome i don't know why with the dual needle pistols it hasn't got um way to fire one but considering it does toxic one yeah okay fine um it is what it is i guess um it's not cheap for what else you get in the book and um, i can see the point in taking taking him um i just think of the the grogans with on with the um, desolator which has got better ap and longer range and uh, mm, uh, no adrenaline is not bad um he's got good shooting capabilities but they are a little bit on the short range side that's your main weakness with this one next we have kira novaleski adrenaline sister Speed of 1, 2, range of 5, fight of 5, survive 5, armor 1, 2 hit points, size 1, 25mm base. Adrenaline shot, hacker, medic, stimulant shot. Uh, comes with a sedative dart, range 2 stun, and sedative injector. Close combat, stun. Um, she's not bad. She's She's got good support capabilities with the adrenaline shot and the stimulant shot. They're not one use, so... You keep using them as much as you want. Um, you've also got the sedative dart and the sedative injector, which are good support, support and uh, penalising capabilities, which is nice. Medic's alright, but she hasn't got energy shields, which is a problem. She is double the points cost of a normal medic. So you've got to watch out there. At least she can shoot and fight. At least it's that for her. Um... I can see the point in taking it as a medic that can handle herself somewhat and got good support capabilities but she's somewhat situational I fear next we have the items on page 111 ammo was 2 points, can have as many as you want AP ammo is 4 points, can only have 2 of them defender shield is 5 points, can only have 1 uh, frag, frag 3 grenades are 6 points, can have as many as you want. Smoke grenades are 3 points, can only have can have as many as you want of them. Um, stun grenades are 4 points, can only have one of them. Med packs 4 points, can only have one of them. I'd have thought they'd have a fair few, but I suppose they've got a specialised medic, so fine. Um, energy shield 3 is 10 points, can only have one. Trip mines are 4 points, can only have one. Thermal mines are 4 points, can only have one. Combat bleeds 2, can have as many as you want stimulant shots two points can only have two of them and the adrenaline shot is two points can only have two they are kind of like the nameless in the sense that each model pretty much has one job and one job only there are a few sort of deviations from that such as the teratons because they've got some sort of guns and the um Tigrix Outrider because it's got a gun but for the most part they are good at one thing and one thing only a lot of the troops well troop choices have got poor survivability that's why they are so cheap a lot of the specialists either go into the category of having fairly good survivability or pretty naff survivability it's not what it's not an in-between it's either good or poor the leaders are also quite useful there are no leaders that are useless it's also a force where you can make them look and customize them however you want do you want a sniper every force you can do that do you want a fast force that's great in close combat you can do that do you want a lot of guns that can um, suppress people and have a lot of high ap capabilities for relatively cheap points cost you can do that um do you just want to have mainly really small stuff that can't actually be seen you can actually do that <laughs> so there are options 
I would honestly say the Rebs is not a force for beginners. The reason being is that their survive stats aren't that great. And shooting capabilities is go it goes from pretty good to pretty poor. That being said though, if you know how to play Dead Zone and you've played for a fair bit, then I think the Rebs can can take it pretty far you just got to know how to treat them and how to respect what they do so that's it for now goodbye for this video